All right, Cherubs, this is Jackson Pollock's Autumn Rhythm. This type of painting is often put under the label Abstract Expressionism. And like other Abstract Expressionist works, people will often comment that it has no natural forms in it. That even if a form we recognize from nature begins to form in our heads, it quickly dissolves. The artists seem to agree with this assessment. When asked by another painter to study nature to help inform his paintings, he replied, I am nature. The same could be said of his paintings. They aren't of nature, they are nature. Jackson Pollock famously engaged with the psychology and philosophy of Carl Gustav Jung and the idea of archetypal forms. I talk a lot about how paintings are a deposit of their time period or culture that produced them, but Pollock wanted to tap into the unconscious and find a visual vocabulary for all of humanity. To better explain this concept, I asked artist and art therapist Chris Engel at his workshop in Jackson Pollock's old hometown of Springs to explain how artists in this tradition can and have used the concept of Jungian archetypes to produce emotional images. So archetypal imagery are those symbols that have collective meaning, a mother, a father, a child, and those resonate throughout history. But for Jackson Pollock, a person who found it hard to speak how to really talk about his emotions. When he found the medium of painting and he was set free by the idea of the collective unconscious and Jungian ideas of allowing things to come from the unconscious and to work abstractly, it gave him great freedom, it gave him the ability of communication and to let loose of what was inside of him. I mean, so much of art and artists deal with emotion and how do you speak everything? How do you talk about the great tragedies or the most beautiful things that happen? And Jackson Pollock couldn't find the words, but he could find the paint. He could find the brush strokes. To create images that tap into these archetypal forms, artists need to play with a different type of geometry. The forms of nature rarely look like the geometric forms you learn about in high school. If nature used that type of geometry, we wouldn't have the beauty of a rose or the fleeting, chaotic beauty of waves crashing on a shore. About 25 years after Pollock painted Autumn Rhythm, a mathematician named Benoit Mandelbrot coined the term fractal to describe this new geometry. Artists are always ahead of the curve with stuff like this. Mandelbrot claimed that the Euclidean geometry, the geometry you learned in high school, could not describe the shape of a cloud, a mountain, a coastline, or a tree. Clouds are not spheres, mountains are not cones, coastlines are not circles, and bark is not smooth, nor does lightning travel in a straight line. Fractals describe the natural world much better. Their designs or quantities with self-similarity. In other words, a fractal image will look similar if we use a wide-angle lens or a telephoto lens. Think about the branches of a tree, and then how that pattern is reflected in the tree itself or a Jackson Pollock painting. It can be difficult to tell whether or not you're looking at a fraction of the painting or the whole thing. A lot has been written about the fractal nature of Pollock's drip patterns, but I have a hunch that the way he uses color also has a self-similar quality. The mathematician Marcus Sotoy has noted that Pollock's paintings at different size scales look the same, which is a property of fractals. So let's return to Autumn Rhythm and give something a try. We'll use Photoshop and a high definition image of the painting, set a pretty high tolerance for what is considered to be the color black, and calculate the percentage of that color in random sections and at random sizes in the painting. We calculated the number of total pixels in each sample and then the number of pixels representing the black pigment. In each of these random samples, the percentage was between 41.1% and 43.9%. So it's easy to see why a sample of this work may be indistinguishable from the work itself. So the color distribution also has the self-similar fractal quality so often found in nature. In this way, Pollock isn't trying to represent or reflect nature. He's trying to actually channel the generative and creative power of nature and, in mimicking the chaotic process of nature, create artwork that taps into those archetypal patterns inherent in all of us and in all of nature. You won't find natural forms like trees or rivers in Pollock's work but you will find the process and geometry nature used to create those peerless works of art.
All right, this is a video I've wanted to make for a very long time, and it was made possible through the general support from Google's Making in Science initiative. You can check out other science goals they support by browsing the hashtag science goals and checking out their YouTube playlist. Destin at Smarter Every Day accomplished one of his science goals recently and made one of the most beautiful videos I've ever seen. You should check that one out and all the other videos on that playlist. For links to that video, the playlist, and the works of Chris Engel, you can find them all below this video. Thanks for watching.